Hi everyone that's joined so far. While we're waiting for a few more people to join, there's a poll. Um, if you wouldn't mind just having a look at some of the questions while we're waiting and letting us have any comments that you've got in the chat box on the right hand side. Um, and also with regards to questions throughout the presentation, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat box and we will um, go through all the questions and answers at the end of the session. <clears throat> For those that have just joined, there's a little poll running in the in the right hand corner of the screen. If you could answer the questions just while we're waiting, we'll give it a few minutes before we let before we start. And for those that have just joined, there is a chat box as well. Uh, if you've got any questions throughout, then just pop the questions in there and we'll make time at the end. We guess that funding would be one of the biggest barriers. Right, shall we uh, we'll start now? <clears throat> I'll leave that poll running in case anyone else joins and wants to add anything for the time. So we are going to go through today um, some of the uh, assistive technology that we've got to help somebody with dementia to be in, independent or stay independent. So I'm going to hand over to Charlotte for the first slide. Hi everyone, so we wanted to kind of have a little chat initially just to kind of look in and see how dementia can affect everyone's or people's daily lives, um, not just not just the people with dementia but also carers um, because it has such a big impact in terms of how how carers need to support individuals with dementia. Um, so so people living with dementia can, can become um, disoriented really really easily and you know, sort of daytime, nighttime can get confused. Their um, their kind of their normal daytime rhythms, um, and nighttime rhythms can become really disoriented quite quickly, um, which can lead to a lot of confusion. Um, forgetting about time scheduling in terms of events, activities, things that they have planned, things that are coming in the future. Um, the the whole concept of waiting for those things to happen can be really really difficult and, and a real challenge. Um, members of family and friends, so you know, people that you've known. 20, 30, 40 years, um, losing contact in terms of knowing who those people are and the security of knowing who those people are, that can be a real kind of a real issue for um, for people with dementia. Um, the, the risk of going out alone, the risk of, of going out unattended and, and having an accident, not being able to kind of find your way back home, not being able to take care of yourself if those, if those things happen. Um, Problems with, with working memory and the concept of time, that's a, a, always a really, really difficult one. Um, and actually kind of knowing what's what's now, what's next, what's what's upcoming. Um, it can it can impact on things like mental health. So, you know, a, a lot of people with, with um, dementia can have depression and anxiety, um, which obviously leads to a, a lower quality of life. Um, and so things like being being more withdrawn, avoiding avoiding social situations, avoiding contact with people, just because there is a, a, initially an awareness of of difficulty and, and then those those kind of challenges, um, which really really impact again on mental health, but also on, on on carers because they then have to kind of take on the role of managing that person's time and managing that person's capacity to to kind of maintain their mental health and their good mental health. 
Um, and the other one is, is the practical stuff. So life skills, you know, weekly food shopping, cooking, um, traveling alone, getting around town, going to see people, paying bills on time, and just maintaining those kind of life skills that are, that are vital life skills that really kind of determine how an individual um, continues to live independently and how they manage themselves independently. Um, and obviously, you know, Sarah and I, we, we don't claim to be experts on, on dementia at all. You know, we, we know that there are so many people who know so much more. Um, but the, 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 the little that we do know, there are a huge amount of, of challenges and a huge amount of, of kind of mountains to climb for, for people with dementia, but also for people who care for and support people with dementia. Um, and so this webinar really wants to focus on kind of the challenges, but also some of the solutions to those challenges, because we can't obviously get, you know, we, we can't find a cure for dementia, but we can put solutions in place that sometimes help kind of mitigate some of those bigger challenges, which really will make a difference and can make a difference to people's lives. Okay, for those that have joined, if, there, if you can complete the poll on the right hand side, it's really interesting for us to find out um, the barriers. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the quarter hour principle now, which is um, something that, that Abilia have been developing and using for the last 20 years um, in Sweden and Norway. And it's how we make time visible. Um, all of our products have the same concept running all the way through them. Um, all, of our pro uh, all of our products have um, a time pillar, which shows time in coloured lights running down and at <clears throat> at every 15 minutes one of the lights goes out um, we're often asked how do people learn what the 15 minutes mean and how the lights mean um, which is really not a, con a kind of consideration for the user all they need to be able to see is that time is passing and they can use more or less which is a concept that most people can understand to work out how close they are to an activity finishing or how close they are to the next activity starting. So is it really important for people that are struggling with the concept of time to be able to see time? Um, and this is what this is one of the most important principles that runs through all of our products. So we have um, various different solutions. I'm going to pass over to Charlotte to talk about the low tech and then I'll talk about the high tech. So our, our first solution on the left hand side of the screen is our memo day planner, which is, I mean, we've heard it called a, a fancy version of a whiteboard, which it, it essentially is true. Um, it's got dots down the side that represent daytime, dots on the other side that represent nighttime. Um, it's adjustable in terms of you can kind of have, you can have the numbers there, you can have the digits there if you want them. You can use it to personalise someone's day, so you can use um, magnets that show kind of pictorial so you can have things like pecs or you know kind of communication images um if someone's language skills and, and reading skills aren't as as strong as they used to be um it's it's really kind of low maintenance in terms of you literally just kind of update it with each stage scheduled um and it counts down time in that way that sarah explained so that the time is represented and so it's not about kind of recognizing time as in you know it's 10 to 9 or it's quarter to 10 it's just this is where we are in the day this is what's coming next and this who might visit next this is who might come you know later on today this is what time i need to drink a glass of water this is what time i need to cook my supper um as i say i mean it can be completely personalized so it's it's very it's very interesting to kind of see how it how it can be kind of tailored to each individual we use it at home with, with my teenager and my nine-year-old but it kind of works for a huge array of of kind of people with, with different issues and, and conditions um, and it just it kind of keeps people on track in terms of what they need to be doing, what's going to come next, and gives them that concept of a, vis a visible timeline for each day. Um, on the right hand side of the screen, we've got the memo timer, and these come in four different um, time amounts. And again, it's got the time pillar on the side. The side. Um, you can have it vibrating. You can have it with an alarm as well if you if you want that. Um, it's waterproof. It's, it's quite shockproof. They're, they're not easily broken. Um, and it just gives that, again, that visual representation of, of you know, time counting down. So if you've got someone who, who you know, their, their family are coming to visit at two o'clock and it's now one o'clock and they've asked four times, what time is, is my family coming? A, a visual representation of what an hour looks like means, means that that hour is actually more manageable for that individual. Um, and reduces a little bit of their anxiety around the concept of time, which really, really helps um, kind of just reduce and alleviate a little bit of the anxiety around 
around not knowing what's happening next or what's coming next. But yeah, it's a, a really kind of low tech solution, both of them, but still very, very helpful in terms of just managing time. Okay, and we're going to move on to the more higher tech um, solutions. So we have a product called Handy Calendar, and those I won't go too much into this. Those of us that have joined us before will have already seen the Handy Calendar, and if you haven't, there are videos on our um, YouTube account and also recordings of previous webinars on the Handy Calendar, exactly how this works. Um, <clears throat> again, we have the time pillar, which is the water hour principle to show time passing. The Handy Calendar is available um, as an app. So it'll work on a smartphone, a tablet or a watch. Um, and I'm guessing for dementia, it's really going to be um, dependent on the person's skills and whether or not they're already using technology and if they're open to using technology. So the Handy Calendar is a visual timetable. Uh, you can add lots of information or a little bit of information depending on the person that you're using with, it with. So you can add things like checklists, notes, voice memos, timers. Um, and you can also link through to other websites. So if it's something like cooking dinner, you can link to a video that shows that person how to cook their dinner. Um, you have alarms and reminders. And you can also set things up for years in advance. So if you've got somebody like Charlotte was saying, struggling to remember to pay bills, if it's an annual bill or a monthly bill, those kind of things could be set up in debt calendars as well with instructions on how to how to pay that bill. Um, the memo planner is based around the same sort of device, but our devices with a memo planner are um, dedicated. So this means that there is no access to the internet. If you're working with somebody that may be vulnerable and you don't want to give them access to the internet, then the memo planner tends to be the preferred device to do that. Um, again, you can add activities on there. You can add your reminders for your bills. You have voice support and you can add checklists and notes to really show somebody how to how to do something, how to cook their dinner, how to make a cup of tea, how to clean the front room. So everything could be put into that device. Um, to help with that um, and as you can see with that picture the memo planner comes in a large wall size version and that also has an app as well so the large wall size version would be in somebody's room or in somebody's home and the app would be on their phone or their tablet so that when they go out of the house they can um, still have access to this and um, both of the high-tech solutions are also supported by Myabilia. Myabilia is a cloud account which enables access to um, anybody supporting that person on a daily basis. Um, and, and you can have multiple people. So it could be that you have family members, but you also have a carer that comes in and out or multiple carers that come in and out. Um, and this gives them the option to update calendars to see exactly what that person has done through the day. Um, and for family members, it gives them that peace of mind that actually that person's checked off taking their medication or they've checked off that they've made their dinner, cleaned their kitchen, all those kind of skills to help somebody stay independent for longer. Um, I, these are kind of across the board solutions that we've spoken about and they go and they tell you exactly what which solution would be best for you. Um, obviously the memo day planner and the memo timer that Charlotte spoke about are um, the, low, the low tech solutions, which may support somebody who's maybe a bit older and wouldn't necessarily want to be introduced to a higher tech solution. And then you've got exactly what the high tech solutions do as well on there for you. Um, I'm just gonna hand back to Charlotte. So yeah, we, we just wanted to quickly kind of talk about how um, how assistive technology can support um, dementia and how it can it can kind of improve the quality of life for people living with dementia. Um, so we can have 
um, an improvement in, in things like motivation. So, you know, get up and go and, and encouraging participation in life. Um, exercise is one of one of the, the kind of important things for um, people living with dementia in terms of keeping keeping active, keeping um, busy, but keeping physically well. And it's, it's you know, it's, it has a huge impact on their, on their quality of life. Um, things like improved self-esteem, um, managing independence and then being able to do certain tasks for, for themselves and, and being able to kind of take a little control of their lives back has a huge um, impact. Um, obviously it gives that increased understanding of time, makes time very, very visual and makes time tangible, which is, is such a challenge for, for a lot of people. Um, it can improve relationships for for the people with dementia, but also vitally for, for you know, support um, carers. So, you know, it reduces the need for supervision, um, reduces the need for kind of constant monitoring and, and reduces that anxiety around kind of managing time. Um, but it, it can increase um, support for carers in terms of how, how they manage um, each individual's time and maybe giving themselves a break, maybe giving themselves a, time, a little bit of time off each day to actually kind of have a little independence of their own. Because obviously, as a, as a carer, for someone with with um, dementia, it can be a huge it can be a huge part of, of of caring. Is that the hours are so so antisocial because you know if someone with dementia wakes up at, at four a.m. and they get ready for their day, the carer then has to be up with them, has to be kind of participating in what's going on. Um, whereas if there's a visual representation of time, there's a visual kind of management of time. The carer then increases increases their capacity to kind of have a little time to themselves, have a little um, space and just you know give themselves a little rest um, pictures obviously have a huge impact on memory um, for people with dementia so things like celebrations birthdays bills um, having a picture as well as words means that they can kind of really understand what's going on and what needs to be done um, handy calendar is is obviously available on mobile phones as well as on tablets so you can have it kind of portable so if you know if you're having a little break for a weekend or if you're having a little respite the support is still is still there it's still visible um the remote support so my ability the um, the the online account for families and carers um means that you know there is so much more re remote support um and it, it means that they can add to schedules they can they can amend schedules they can alter schedules for for each individual um you know if, if someone different is going to visit if someone if something different is going to happen to that routine it can be in remotely which is a huge huge help um, and as I say, I mean the, the biggest thing for me is increased support for carers, um, and how it how it can how it can offer a little bit of, of support for for people who you know work really really hard to support people with dementia. That for me is, is kind of the biggest advantage for um, Avilia Solutions. Okay, um, for those I've just noticed that quite a few people have joined. I've had some emails come through saying people um, were struggling to get on. And for those of you that have just joined, there's a poll in the right hand corner. If you wouldn't mind just having a look at that, I'm going to close it down in a second. Um, and then as well, we'll go to the questions at the end as well that have been put in the chat box. Um, so we just wanted to show you some case studies and research. Although our products are fairly new to the UK, as we spoke about before, in Sweden and in Norway, they've been using these products for the last 20 years. So there are quite a few case studies um, from Sweden and Norway of how these have helped. And um, there's also a lot of um, research as well. Our, our devices are classified as medical devices. So they do have MDD certification as class one. And we are now obviously um, working towards the new MDR classification, which has been delayed because of coronavirus. But to get the classification to be a medical device, then they, there does have to be um, formal research behind the products. So um, I just wanted to show you that the products are proven to work. And there are, like I say, the case studies and the research to back up what we're saying about these. Um, and I won't go through this whole thing. I've kind of pulled out a few bits and pieces for you to see because this, is, this one's quite a long research document. Um, but just some of the feedback was that um, there was a feeling of more confidence about days and dates. Self-esteem was better because um, the, the gentleman in the first case study was able to follow the time better. It was easier for him to be orientated about his day 
um, in the second case, um, <clears throat> the woman had said that she had learned to use it and appreciated it. It made her feel secure about her day and she found it of great benefit to her. And like I say, you can go onto our website and you can look at all the different case studies and all the research that's on there to back up um, the products and see why they've been developed, how they've been developed and how they've changed over the years as well to become these products. So, support. Sorry, is this me? <laughs> um, so yeah, at Avilia, we can um, we can offer you a four week free trial at um, at the with the handy calendar. So if you um, if you if you wanted to have a quick look at it, see how it works, see how you can input data, see how you can kind of work through it, and see if it's suitable. Um, we're more than happy to uh, to set people up with a a free demo license and, and have a quick look at it. Um, there are sort of mountains of, of help um, on Avilia's website. There's manuals, there's picture manuals, including setups, and we've actually got a few how-to videos um, on the go. We've got all of our previous webinars as well on um, on YouTube, which is obviously kind of beneficial if you want to look in more detail at these different solutions. Um, we're happy to offer training um, with some with some additional training sessions that we can we can kind of make bespoke to you, um, and we're happy to do some online training sessions. We're happy to kind of have a one-to-one -one online conversation if needs be, because obviously with COVID we can't we can't come to people at the moment. Um, and we also have a, he a help desk um, based in the UK down in Cambridge that's um, nine to five Monday to Friday, um, and we're more than happy to to take your emails, take calls. And just answer queries and and suggestions. So yeah, we've, we've got kind of different supports available. Um, just I just wanted to pick up on some of the the poll questions as well. Um, we kind of thought that funding would be top of the list for the biggest barrier for people getting support through assistive tech. Um, and one of the things that we've kind of been working with local authorities that we're already working with is finding the cost solutions to have an assistive tech. People um, often view it as a luxury, whereas if it's viewed as a um, something that can cut costs, as much as we working in the field don't like to talk about that, then obviously cost does come um, into it in a big way. And if we looked at the slide with the low tech board, there was a board on there that um, said Brian's board underneath. And this was a gentleman that was getting ready to be moved into assisted living because they deemed that he wouldn't be able to live by himself independently. He kept missing carers, kept missing a doctor's appointments. Um, within a week of having the board, they decided it was decided that he would be staying at home in his home in his own flat. So we often have to kind of point out that he assisted living have been a lot more expensive than giving him the board. Brian's quality of life is is um, greater because he's been able to stay at home. Obviously, we do need to look at the the cost benefits of keeping somebody at home as well. Um, so that's something that we kind of speak about a lot. And that we're in the process of getting some um, stats together to show how that would work. Um, another another um, one that's come up is staff engagement. Obviously, we offer the training sessions as well. So the training sessions would be hopefully to get staff engagement. We, we completely understand if you can get the staff on board and you can prove to people why the products work, then um, that's half the battle to get and to get in somebody looked after with assisted tech um changing the way people have used assisted tech we are kind of thinking that that will probably change due to the situation that we're in now um, and if more people have had assistive technology before the coronavirus hit then i think um it would have been a lot easier to remote support people than what we've had so i think the way the change in the way that people view assistive tech will start to happen but obviously, if you do have any ideas on who we can speak to or anything that we can do to help, then um, please let us know in the chat box. But I'm going to end this poll. Um, and we're going to have a look at.
the chat box now and just see what questions have come through. I think you've been answering some, haven't you, Charlotte? I've answered a couple. I've got quite a few to um, to run through. I know Thanks. Ellen has um, asked a really, really good question, actually. Do we have an assessment tool to support whether the tech would work with each individual user's needs? Um, and so, yeah, I know I know that um, Ursa over in Sweden has um, begun um, a little bit of work in terms of an assessment tool. And it's not obviously a condition assessment. It's a, a product suitability um, assessment, which obviously kind of depends on each individual user. It's very it's very focused on the user rather than on the solution. Um, we've started with with um, learning disabilities and autism, and we do plan to um, to work towards a um, a, a dementia um, solution assessment as well. Um, Laura and Nikki have both answered this actually and said assessment tool would be the OT assessment. Um, and Laura suggested that assault, um, speech and language therapy involvement to see if they'd be appropriate. They're both huge, huge um, resources that, you know, if they, it, it depends on each individual. And, you know, if a, if a speech and language therapist and an, an OT assessment says, you know, perhaps an assistive technology piece of uh, solution might be suitable. Then, yeah, absolutely, come and talk to us, and we can we can kind of work with you to to assess whether this is the right solution for for your individual user. Um, because there is no blanket of yes or no. It's just it's totally user dependent. Um, we've had another question at the bottom. Um, Liz asked on on the chat box, can family members add information remotely? Um, so, do you want to go through that one, Sarah? Yeah, um, we touched on the, the MyAbilia for the more high-tech accounts. And this is the online account that gives anyone access. As long as the user allows them to have access, they can have access to the user's calendar. They can add things, change things. And like I said before, they can check to make sure that um, things like medication, shopping, dinners, the things that are really important have been checked off. So it really gives... a uh, a great kind of remote solution and you can access that on any device you can access that on your phone you can access that on your computer you can access that as a web app um, on any device so at any time you can check and see what that person should be doing and has done okay so Liz has asked have we got product brochures that we can um, that we can send out so that Liz and, and other people can give to patients and um, we do have those so we're more than happy to publish those and send them over to you after the webinar um, Tracy's asked, is it being recorded and can we send a copy? So absolutely, we're, we're recording um, each webinar as we do them. So yeah, we're more than happy to send one over to you, um, Tracy, as soon as this is done. Um, we do have the files available as well, don't we? You should be able to yes. download the files. Of course. Um, sorry. Sorry, I have to share them, them. yes. Yeah, if we can go on and share all of those yeah. and then you can um, download them at the end as a digital copy. But if you would like a um, a hard copy, then we can post some out. That's not a problem at all. Absolutely. Um, Debbie's asked about head injury. Hi, Debbie. It's been a while since we spoke. Um, yeah, we obviously this one was kind of dementia focused, but we do have people using with um, brain injury as well. So again, the, the type of product would depend on the needs of the user, whether that would be the kind of low tech solutions or we'd look at a high tech solution. And um, just to touch back on what Charlotte was talking about, the OT assessment tool um, also over in Sweden is developing that. So you'll be something that you can click on online and go through. Um, but also has a background as an OT. That's what her training is in. So she's kind of well placed within the organisation to um, to to do that for us um what else have we got yeah the tech well hopefully there will be more tech available in um care homes it's certainly um like we've spoken about before it's certainly something that they have in care homes in sweden and norway there's slightly better place for it than us because um all of the equipment that we've spoken about today is available on prescription. So um, if you have any kind of cognitive impairment, then you would automatically be entitled to all of our products, which obviously helps with why it's been so successful in Sweden and Norway. 
Um, and as we know from the poll, funding is quite a uh, quite a big problem here in the UK. But yeah, remote support is kind of what we're what we're trying to head towards. Definitely. Um, Going back to the brochures, they are also available on the Abilia website, which is www.abilia.uk. Um, so you can download them from there if you uh, if you can't get them off the uh, the chat box for any reason. And I think that's all. I think that's all of the questions we've covered today. Yeah, I mean, Nikki's made a comment about local authorities not thinking long term. I think it, it really is. It's a, it's a kind of a postcode lottery with local authorities. You either have a really good assistive tech team within a local authority or no assistive tech team is what we've found. Um, I personally work with Cambridge and Essex County Councils and they both have a really good assistive tech team that are really open to assistive tech and really open to making sure people get the tech that they need. Um, and it is a battle. Like I said, I think people will start looking more into tech. Um, we do have contacts with most local authorities, but it is it is a battle asking people to look at a whole new a whole new way of working. Um, I think that's everything, isn't it? Um, Debbie's just popped have... up. Sorry, oh, just one don't... more. Um, Debbie's just popped up and said, "Who is the OT within Abilia, please?" Ah, uh, that that would be a lady called Orsa over in Sweden, but I am. I can pass on the information, Debbie, if you'd like to have a chat with her. I'm sure she wouldn't mind talking to you. She came over um, to do an event in Essex with me um, to talk about her OT background and how she has fitted into Abilia and why she's working here. So um, I'm quite happy to pass on her information if you want to have a chat with her. That's not a problem. OK, and Liz has just said, are patients having to self-fund at the moment for um, our products? Again, that's a bit of a postcode lottery, depending on your assistive tech team. Um, if you have a really good assistive tech team, they fund. I mean, like I say, again, Essex have a really good assistive tech team and they fund based on the person's needs. So if they feel that one of our interactive calendars would be really good for that person, then they will fund that. Um, other local authorities don't. So there, there's kind of really no across the board saying, Yes, local authorities will fund some NHS assistive tech teams will fund as well. Um, it's there is a kind of no concrete answer to that one. Unfortunately, it would be a case of getting in contact with your assistive tech team, contact with your assistive tech team, or passing over the details to us so that we can go and see them, have an online demo, um, have a chat, and see. There is funding available for assistive tech. Um, and again, Worcester, Worcestershire Telecare, they are really good at funding our assistive tech as well. Amica 24, part of that, um, they fund. It's all about having the right people that understand that actually that piece of assistive tech could completely change somebody's life um, and being open to it. Absolutely. Um, Debbie has just responded and said it depends how good the OT team are in each local authority. And I think that that's really, really true. I think it it can vary so much from, from one authority to another. Um, and yeah. Nikki's confirmed it as well, saying that, you know, the OT team there use who they want. And it's it, it's a bit of a lottery, as you say. So, yeah, if yeah. we can do anything to help or if you have any further questions, please feel free to uh, to get in touch. And we're happy to speak to, to OTs and to local authorities, quite happy to speak to you all. Yeah, and I think as well when people understand the cost saving, as much as we don't like to talk about the cost saving, when people do understand the cost saving of keeping people at home longer and um, as well as allowing people to work for longer, yes. then um, these are the kind of things that we talk about when we go into meetings with, uh, with local authorities. So by all means, if you have contact details for your assistive tech team in your local authority, then um, please send them over to us and we will make contact. You can, we will be sending out a copy of this webinar to everybody as well um, that's joined us today. So feel free to pass that on to your assistive tech team to have a look at. Um, and again, we are happy to do online demos of all of our equipment. 
um, especially while we're waiting for lockdown to finish. And then when lockdown's finished, we have people all over the country that can go and do um, product demos to local authority teams. Um, I think a lot of the time people don't know that our stuff's out there and this is what we spent the last kind of year trying to make people aware that actually there are products available to help with memory and planning and organization skills and visual timetables. Um, so yeah, please feel free to pass them on and we'll make contact or feel free to pass our details on and ask them to make contact if it's something that you've seen that you think would be useful. Um, I'm going, we have one more poll if you wouldn't mind having a look. Um, and publish. Um, there's another poll in the corner. Just we, We're kind of trying to ascertain whether people are open to online demos or people from our webinars are looking more to after lockdown demos. So, um, yeah, if you could let us know. If you do have any more questions, you have um, both mine and Charlotte's contact details on the end slide here, um, and you would have had emails from us as well. Um, you can still add questions into the chat box. We that will be available for us to download later on this afternoon or tomorrow, and we will in we'll email people individually as well to make sure that we've answered everything. But yeah, please feel free to um, contact us if you need any further information. Okay, we've gone over by about seven minutes now. I'm, I'm conscious that people are having to, uh, <laughs> yeah, people are having to leave because they've got other uh, other things going on. But thank you, everyone, so much for uh, for joining us today. We're really, really grateful for uh, for your time. And yeah, if you've got any problems or any questions, please feel free to uh, to drop us a line. Um, thank you. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>